Hi everyone, Tim the Plane Man here and welcome to Plane Time RQ7 Shadow Edition. And I must say I'm having an awful lot of fun um, putting together the jigsaw puzzle that is the RQ7. There's a lot of pieces, but they fit together very well. The plans are awesome, very clear and almost completely correct. And uh, tell you almost everything you need to know about assembling the plane there. One of the things you do have though is the uh, the pictures and there's no text description so I am a little bit guessing but mostly it's it's clear. So what I have here laid out and it, it took some in some respects looks like a bit of a mess but it really is not a mess. Um, let's start over here. Now what I have here is the plan and uh, if you can see um, here I've actually started laying out the wing uh, and there's it would be the left wing that is uh, shown on the plan and so I've found each one of the pieces and put pretty much positioned them where they need to be for the left wing and started slotting them together uh, in sort of a dry fit just to understand everything now at the same time as come putting together all the pieces for the left wing I've also started laying out the pieces here at the bottom for the right wing on the bottom section of the plan underneath here is you know your your high level schematic of the plane the picture of the tail plane uh, information and part of the tail plane assembly diagram which you don't really need for this part so I think it works okay and what I just wanted to quickly mention I guess really two things one is that there's there are several balsa wood spars well mostly balsa because this one here is not balsa um, that one is going to be your L uh, let's do the, the one from the, down here, but I have the same one up the, at the top there. So what we have is our L2 and our L3. And this is um, sort of a, I don't know if it's a hard balsa. It doesn't seem, maybe it's hard balsa. Okay. And there are some other spars that are a, a softer but thicker balsa. So there's a lot of balsa actually in the wing, a little bit more than in the fuselage. The fuselage is mostly plywood, although the sheeting is balsa. In the wing, we have a mixture, actually a mixed bag. We have several of the ribs are ply. Some of them are uh, balsa, mostly the ones that need to be shaped, actually. For example, this W13 goes right on the end of the wing, and then I'm assuming will be sanded back so they've given you more or less balsa is used for the shaping uh, the spars which are these l uh, what we've got here l4 uh, and the l2s which go at the front of the wing and then the leading edge which is the l1 uh, they're all balsa wood and uh, and we have this which is the rib called W1, which actually um, is the joiner that connects the, because um, you'll have the W2 goes here on the, on the end of the wing, and then the W1 will go here, where optionally the wing can be made removable. So that's a nice hard piece of, now I don't know, that's a very, that's quite a hard wood, that doesn't feel like balsa to me. Um, I'm not an expert in wood, so I don't know what it is, but I'd say that's not balsa wood and it's definitely not ply. It's actually some kind of fairly hard wood. So there's the W1 and then back to we have another piece which is a W1-1 and that again is a balsa piece that will fit on, actually not there, but there uh, as part of the joining mechanism to join where the, the main wing slots onto the fuselage. So the two things I just wanted to quickly point out about that, um, is, yeah, I mean, laying out the pieces um, is fairly straightforward. Uh, this piece here, L4, just wanted to mention this one because it's clearly the correct piece for here, but it's labeled L7 and it's L4, right? So that, 
I don't know, it, a simple little thing. If you, you look everywhere, there is no other piece anywhere that is an L4 that is exactly that shape, and there is no L7. So that is definitely one tiny little mislabeling um, of the wing pieces. And the other thing about the wings that I wanted to talk about is how the balsa pieces are constructed. So in every case, with all of the spars, because this is a 2.1 meter plane, each wing is going to be probably about 700 millimeters long, because if you take account of the fuselage, uh, something like that. So we've got all, my, all the spars from the, uh, on the main wing, the L, what are these? So the L3s, L4s, uh, L2s, L1s, are, yeah, all of those. L1, 2, 3, and 4 are all in two pieces, two parts. So there will be a L3-1, and there is an L3-2, like that. And there is this carefully cut out um, jigsaw puzzle joiner here to give lots of joining surface, and that needs to be glued to create a a joint and to make that complete long piece. So my best guess uh, at this point is that what I want to do is uh, actually clear my bench a little bit uh, and glue down flat all of these spars to make the longer spars that I'm going to need to build out the wing. I think Kind of thinking on the fly here a little bit. The second part of building the wing is this key piece here, which is the the boom the boom box. It's the box that frames the part where the aluminium no the carbon fiber boom is actually going to slot into the rear of the wing. If you can see here, what I've done is I've laid out these pieces. These are J1, J2, J3, J4. And then I think this will be the L3, uh, the L, L4-2. Okay, so if you see how that works, what's actually gonna happen uh, once this is all together is that the, the boom, let's see if I can fit that in there. It's a pretty tight fit. I mean, maybe, I'm not sure if it's really intended to be removed, but so the boom, slides in there, all the way through there, up to, as far as I can see, up to the, the spar, uh, no, it's gonna be up to the carbon fiber rods, right, there's, uh, oh no, even before that, up to the spar here, which is gonna be what? So your L3 will slide in here, that will push all the way forward to the L3, and what we have, here is these clips. These will have to actually be installed in here. These clips will be what clasps the carbon fiber rod into the wing. Okay, so here's the discussion of glue and there was a really good video I just saw just now about glues on foam. And I need to talk a little bit about glue for the wood. And in, in particular, what I want to talk about is these. So in this case, this is a W4 and a W5 rib. And there's two of each, W4 and W5, and they come as two plywood ribs. And so they need to be glued together, basically laminated. So they make a much stronger um, side to the box that holds the boom, right? Now, what I, have found with CA is it's great for something like, you know, fitting a box together like this. I can hold it for 30 seconds until everything's firm. And then I know that that's glued and that's firm. But if I want to glue these two things together, I don't want to do that. You know, if I, if I slathered, if I slathered some CA glue on here and then tried to, swap this together and get it lined up 
correct and then by the time I get one end right, the CA will have sat enough at the top to have locked me into a position where they're probably out of alignment. So what I will do with these guys is glue them with aliphatic glue, which takes a little bit of time to go off. The advantage is that it also gives me time to slot them together. And I can also clamp them while they're drying to make sure that they make a really you know, nice, clean, uh, solid, um, basically double plywood. Okay, so everything, all the action here is on here on the edge of the desk. I think you can actually see all the pieces. And what I've decided to do, and without turning over the, the plan to see the pictures, I think this is what I'm supposed to do anyway, is I'm gonna glue every single one of these spars that is intended to be like longer uh, or joined in the middle this is the l1 l2 l3 and l4 one set for each wing and i'm going to glue them all together and what i've, I've decided to do that is because i want to make sure that i can get them all uh, square and uh, this seems to me to be the best way to do that so now one thing that comes up when, when you're doing this, there is these arrows. Every single one of the spars clearly marked with an arrow saying, affect which way is up. But notice that when you join two of these together, you may find that the arrow is on the other side, on the opposite side. So here we have two, one has the arrow on this side where you can see it, and one has the arrow on this side, this side where you can see it, this side where I can see it. And in order to get the arrow pointing upwards, it needs to be on the opposite side. So to get that right, I have to have this arrow on this side and the arrow on the back is gonna be pointing up, right? Now that is seems to be true for every single one of these except for the leading edge. The leading edge L1-2 and L1-1 are the only one where the arrows line up on the same side. So here we have one complete set, L4-1, L4-2, arrows in the same direction. L4-1, L4-2, arrows in the same direction. All right, so I guess I'm doing it in pairs. L2-1 and L2-2, arrows in the is up here up here they're in the same direction all right and up here i've got my l2-1 and my l2-2 and let me make the arrows point up so up up same direction perfect okay then i've got my l2-1 and l2-2 and they're both pointing up now i've got my l3 which is this hardwood and the same thing happens here. We've got our up here and we've got our up there. Okay. And then we've got, so I did the L2-2s, then another set of L2-1s, sorry, L1s, arrows pointing in the same direction. And finally, my L3-1 with the arrow pointing up. So they should all line up. Now by lining these up flat on my bench here, and I will put weights down after I glue that, and also pushing them against each other, because each one of them is at, the, the join is in a different place, I'm actually pointing the join in every case up against a, almost a, a different, just make sure that's totally true, a different, square edge of the one against it. So what I plan to do now is basically put aliphatic glue to, in each one of the inset, the inside joiners, and then I'm going to tack it with CA on the outside. And I've put a sheet of parchment, cooking parchment paper underneath well, I'm going to say, I think this is working really well. You can see from the top view here, I'm just holding that just while that 
aliphatic glue kind of initially goes off, initially dries. It takes um, a lot, quite a while for the aliphatic glue to really dry. Uh, just a quick tip about putting the wings together. These pictures here on the plans are, are actually quite important in terms of how you put things together. So what I figured out by laying out all the wings, which I've done here, um, it's a bit of a mess, but um, these are all the pieces for the left wing and these are all the pieces for the right wing. Um, and I laid them all out on the plan. And when I did that, I had all the pictures folded over just because I couldn't fit the plan on my, on my building board. And then I couldn't see these pictures. So quick tip number one, and I've done this now, take a photograph of each one of the pictures on the plan and sort of put it somewhere where you can get at them if you, for example, do what I did and fold the plans over so you can't see the back. I was gonna just do the, the right wing and not worry about recording it because I assumed we've got it with the left wing, but as soon as I started putting it together, I realized that I learned something and it might help you. So I thought I'd pull this in and just show you how I found is a better way to slot the wings together. Uh, it's much simpler and easier to get it right. So the first thing to do is to take the two pieces, the two ribs that have the, the servo mounting slots in them and slot them together. So that will be your W10 and W11. And thinking just that I've got to do this in reverse. So they, they go W10 and W11 go there. And the W6 and W7, I think it is. Yes, W6 and W7. So you see I've slotted those in and put it in. And what you want to do is you actually want to, and I guess I should show you complete completely, is what you want to do is you want to actually put W6 and 7 with the already slotted in servo mounting plate. Then the W, okay, W8, 9, and then 10 and 11 with the mounting plate and slide them into the L3. And then the, this spar here, which is your L4, pre-glued already, will slot in nicely. And it, notice it has these slots that actually have to go in here like this. So that will slot in nice and clean. And then what you're gonna do is take the W4, W5, making sure to get the W5 on the outside and the W4 on the inside because this hole has to be on the side where the spark comes in from the fuselage. So this hole is really important, otherwise you'll find your spark won't go in. And that's the only thing that differentiates these two. So you really have to bear it in mind and get it right when you're putting it together. With the J1, J2 and J3 already slotted in, nothing glued yet. Now you could take your life in your hands and glue the J1, J2, J3. I found that it actually works to get everything together and then, and then start doing the glue. So now what you'll find is the J4 and J5 just slot in nicely right into those two spars. And if you did it the other way around, which is what I was talking about with the other wing, and you put this in first, then you find you have a problem getting those guys on. Um, so it actually works out really, really simple to do it this way around. It just, it just all slides together and there's really nothing, um, I'll say it all slides together. It's a little fiddly because the laser cut is extremely well done. But there, that's how it goes. Um, and see that just, that just slots in. So then 
your W2, which goes on, on the fuselage end there. And you're going to glue that first, again, like I said, before you put the W1 on, because that's slightly raised along this corner. So that won't go on just yet. Got to get the W3 and get that. And again, that, see that? By putting those guys in first and then sliding these in, everything just slits, slots together. It's, it's painless. Um, and there you go, your L7, which is actually your L4, just pops right in there. And uh, Bob's your uncle. And I said it again, I said it before, and I'll say it again, Bob really was my uncle, uh, Mr. Uncle Bob. All right, so um, I'm now going to go ahead and basically put the other pieces in. Uh, uh, oh, a mistake that I made last time around was I switched out the L2 um, block here, which goes at the front, versus the L3, which goes here. Um, and the L3, the key with the L3 in particular is to wait until you put the, um, what I am calling stringers on, before you, uh, before you glue it. So that will go in there at the top. And yes, you do need to glue an extra piece at the end. I'm not sure if it really matters whether you do that, which, which way around you do that, but um, it, it does not quite reach and you have extra. Right, so there's three pieces here. Um, you ended up, I ended up with one extra piece on the other way around because there's only two of them, so there's plenty of extra. So that can that can slot in maybe that side. Um, not really sure where whether it makes any sense, and there's no guidance on the plan as to where to do the join for this what they call the balsa wood strip. And as far as I can see, it doesn't really make any difference. Um, it's the key is that it actually needs to stick out. Um, actually, let me let me get that right. Whichever end you do it on, the the, the rib on the end here, right, that goes through there, and then needs to stick out by the width of the last piece on there because it actually goes through a slot there. And again, you don't want to put it on yet and glue it because you want to line everything up with the base, but you do want to make sure that you get that distance right. So in terms of just uh, framing it or dry fitting it, that's where it needs to go. And if you do a little bit too much, it doesn't matter because it can be sanded anyway. So that, I will now cut a small piece here. Same concept. It needs to stick out a little bit further than it really needs to be. There we go. That will go on there. Sticks out a bit too far on this end, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so now this L2, this L3-3 uh, goes in in the right place. And again, the reason why these particular pieces are going where they go in um, is because they line up behind the join. So there's a join here. So that's the L4-3 that will go on to strengthen, basically it's to strengthen that the join location, right? So that, that will clip on right nicely there. Lines up at the, at the bottom. Makes it nice and strong. 
makes it nice and strong. Here's my join location here. And that's interesting, just want to confirm. Yeah, they ends up with the L3, the 4-3 and the L2-3 are in the same place. And the L3-3 is where the sort of a mounting black plate is. So now I can just slip on, clip on the, the, the second leading edge. There's two leading edges, L1, L2-1 or L2, which the one and the two after the join and then the L1, which the L1 just goes, um, just gets glued on once everything else is together. It's really simple. Uh, and I used aliphatic glue for that. These guys just slide on nicely. So as you can see, it really matters which order you lay this out in. So before I glue, and I'll just kick on to that in a minute, I will slide the, uh, yes, uh, you know what, there's another little point. It found that it's a good idea to slide this boom in before gluing. Of course, you want to be careful not to glue it in, but you want to do want to slide it in before gluing just to make sure that those J1, 2, 3, and 4 pieces, and here's the J4, are actually lined up. We've got everything. I just need to slide in the carbon fiber rods. The three millimeter carbon fiber rods slide in here now. That goes in really nicely. Of course, it's gonna jag. There we go. All the way through. Ah, and this is where your uh, W6-1 goes on the outside here because it forms the, the block, the blocker location where that W3 goes through the w W6, but doesn't want to keep going any further. So therefore you'll have your W6-1 glued on there to stop those from sliding further than they should. So that goes on there like this. Okay, I might as well do the one last little piece of that. Just get that in the hole. This! This is where the, the main wing spar should, if all is right with the world, slide in through that tube created by the combination of the carbon fiber spar uh, rods and the rips, and that works just perfectly. So that's how the that's how the spar is going to be for the wings. So when it comes to shooting the wings, uh, I think there's two things to bear in mind. Uh, one, maybe just for me, but I still think it's I don't know might be helpful for yourselves as well. Is although the plans the the, the the diagrams and the pictures show that pretty much the next step is do the sheeting. In fact, what I plan to do is sheet the bottom of the wing and leave the top open because there's still uh, wiring that I need to figure out. And there's two things about the wiring. One is that there's, okay, wires that need to come in through the spar and then go down to the boom to the tailplane. The second thing is, as we have discovered, there are flaps on this plane. So there's two servos that will be needing wires to run up to the servos. And the third thing is, this is just me, but I plan to put some navigation lights in the, probably on the outside of the, uh, the wingtip and it will yeah, require some wiring. So I really don't want to sheet the top wing until I have all of that in place. So what I'm going to do is sheet the bottom. So what I've figured out, again, the, the, the labeling's, I mean, 
well it is labeled but it's not that helpful so what we've got is here at the 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 top edge the front edge of the of the wing here we're labeled the sheeting is labeled up mu for i guess main um up left and main up right and then we have main down left and main down right and, and there's two pieces labeled mdl and this is the left wing and then there are two exactly the same identical pieces so i'm not sure really what the point of doing this was where they're labeled mdr so i'm going to say that's probably two pieces for the left wing and two pieces for the right wing so these will sheet on here as your mdls glue on at the front <coughs> on the wing here they need to curve around the, the ribs and then they slot in behind this leading edge here and there's going to be a lot of sanding required to get that nice and round and that should work out just fine there's a little bit of a gap there but i think i can just Uh, okay, yes, that works much better. Okay, so that goes on there. There's your MDL, and there's a second MDL, and it's exactly the same, and it doesn't make any difference which way around they go. The next thing is labeled here is you've got your MU. So these are uh, MU and MD. I'm sorry, but yes, MU and MD. So MU will be the upside or the the upper side of the of the sheeting so we're not doing that now so this is basically your MD and there's an MD1 and an MD2 and an MD3 and an MD4 and it's just sort of written on here but if you look at it it's pretty straightforward these MD1, 2 and 3 pieces are identical there's no difference they're, they're exactly the same shape and size so it doesn't matter which one goes where it's just the MD1, 2, and 3 here. And all that happens is that they need to glue on here. 